alone on a Friday night. Yes. God, you're pathetic. Do you want to stop being pathetic? Are you tired of daydreaming about hats all day long? Do you want peace and tranquility? That's exactly how I felt on a day when I finally got that notification from the post office on my phone. My happiness literally knew no bounds. These three months of waiting became history in a matter of seconds. You've got mail, Opa. Before I start discussing the plush itself, I just want to tell that this is my very first commentary video ever. I've never done one before. Can you believe that? I also want to apologize in advance for all subsequent grammatical errors that I'll make simply because, uh, English by no means is not my native language. I'm trying my best. I really hope for your understanding. Let's get straight to the review. I love a handy time, and I mean really. I played for over 300 hours and I enjoyed each second that I've spent playing this game. It is simply bewildering. No other game has brought me such experiences ever before. And um, yeah, these games probably shouldn't be near each other unless... Hello? I'll take you. No thanks. You gotta be hey. kidding. Gotcha! Huh. And of course, after playing it for so long, I wanted to have some kind of souvenir to remind me of those beautiful times in case I ever dropped this game. The very first thing you can notice is that the design of the plush is drastically different from the one in the game. I can't really tell why would they redesign the Hattie, because I'm not a manufacturer in any shape or form. It's completely their business, actually. My guess is that... It's kinda hard to replicate the initial design in terms of a plushie. Although I've seen some bare made custom plushies, this theory still might be the case. When you're grabbing the plushie for the first time, you can help yourself but notice that it's so soft. And the size of it can be compared to the Nintendo Switch, as they're pretty similar in terms of size. While inspecting, you can notice that all signs of headkey are intact. A hat with a yellow stripe, hair with a couple of pigtails, a ponytail, purple tunic with a big grey zipper swing, cape with an orange button, beige pants and brown boots. She definitely can be identified as a headkey, so this means that they basically got all the attributes right. Let's start reviewing straight from the top. The hat is really huge. It's bigger than the head. The fabric is soft and feels like a pile carpet. When you drag your fingers across the hat, the traces appear. The closest comparison to this phenomena is probably the Nicolas Cage pillow. You can spot these seams all over the place and they kinda ruin the overall look of the plush and unfortunately, 
I would mention them once. The head is so really squishy. I wonder what's inside of it. 10 out of 10 would squish again. Zooming on the face, I can tell it is just straight up adorable. The cheeks are chubby and I just can't help myself but give her a small boop every once in a while. I also love how we used a different kind of fiber for her irises. Looks really bright, colorful, sort of shiny and super cute. No pretensions whatsoever. 10 out of 10. Such a lovely face. The smoothness of this cinnamon colored hair with side swept bangs and a couple of hanging pigtails spreads really good wipes all over the place. It is very nice to touch and looks very good. The pigtails just fuzz everywhere and can be twisted or wrapped around the face to keep the plush warm, protect it of viruses or for making a Caucasian cosplay. On the sides you can spot a pair of wobbly ears and that's straight up adorable. I probably could have sued them, but they look nice anyway. Doesn't look all that bad in my opinion. On the back, you can obviously see more seams and a huge scrunch ponytail. The way it's connected to the head kinda spooks me out because the connection looks fragile and flimsy. Don't want it to fall off after a while just because of it. I'm just doubtful of such things. She's really important to me and that's why I'm really afraid of anything falling off or unraveling. 10 out of 10. Silky smooth hair. Silky smooth. <laughs> I think that the cape is the weakest part of the plushie. It's made out of the same material as her tunic, which I think is a terry cloth or minky, and it's fine. But the back side of the cape feels like a microfiber cloth. The same type of fiber I usually use to wipe my switches screen with, and it doesn't provide much pleasant feedback. There are not one but two flaws I want to point out. The first thing is that my cape is not seen to the body, and it just flimsy dangles and spins around the body. The second flaw is that the button is literally hot glued to the cape. I ain't no expert, but I don't think that it's gonna last long. 9 out of 10. Whichever superhero first came up with the idea of wearing a cape, he wasn't really onto anything good. The tunic is my most favorite part. It is certainly soft. It also has a good color and the material that was used for it is just perfect. Looks really cute and nothing seems out of place at all. 10 out of 10. This paragraph sounded like a review from Amazon to be honest. The legs for some reason are unproportional, and if you're not gonna pay much attention then they look just fine, but if you're gonna, then you'll notice how weird they are. It may be a defect that still looks very strange. Moving cover further down, they can observe the boots. Oh man, the boots. The boots are just some brown spots with no detail whatsoever, and the seams are also present here. I can't really say much because there is nothing to talk about. 5 out of 10. Nice. Important mention, I don't really know how you can wash the plush. I probably wouldn't recommend washing it in a washing machine, but rather by using something like a special vacuum cleaner with which people usually skin innocent plush toys away. I literally have no idea how kids entertain themselves these days, as there are a couple reasons for that. I grew out of this phase a long time ago. From that period a lot of different friends appeared, so I was really confused about what to offer her. As I saw in the game, she enjoys gaming and I'm pretty much familiar with it, so I just simply gave her a switch to see what she'll munch on. Hey kid, whatcha playing? Are you winning? Oh no. But in actuality, what kind of entertainment can it provide to you or vice versa? The good thing is that this part is completely up to you. For example, you can pet her, read her a book or something, adore her from a distance, 
take her on a trip. Basically, it's all limited only by your imagination. Just don't go too hard and be careful, as you might damage your plush, and that probably won't leave you any positive memories after doing so. Oh no, I just dropped the baby. Let's sum it up real quick. Why you would wanna or not wanna buy the plush by using the simple pros and cons system? Let's look at the pros first. It's cute as spec. It's cheap and retails only for 14 US dollars. The build quality. Yeah, it's pretty neat even if it doesn't look so. It's boopable. It can be a good collectible item if you're a head in time fan just like me, or just simply love cute soft toys. It can be taken anywhere to brighten up your lonely or not so escapades. Cons. Seams are everywhere. Design. It's not that bad, but I don't prefer the original one from the game. Overall decent. Delivery time outside the US. If you're living inside the US, then that's not something you should consider when buying. But for me, it was a completely different situation. I waited 3 months for it, and I also had to spend my Slavic currency before it, you know, collapsed in the same short span of 3 months when I was waiting for her arrival. She can't do peace and tranquility. Her arms don't have a wide range of movement. So I guess she's now all about stress and hostility. Can't be left unattended. Seriously, never ever leave her unattended. And the reason is that her umbrella doesn't come bundled. So she'll just start grabbing dangerous utensils around the house and continue her search for the lost time pieces. Everybody dance! I said everybody dance! Oh hi! Smasher! Yeah. I'm not feeling great. sums it up. I know that everyone has different opinions, but that's what I think of it. See for yourself if you're interested or not. But in the end, Plushy might not even matter at all. It's the emotions and feelings that you experience do. These feelings make you feel alive and satisfied. They help you literally in anything, but only in a simple, Kindest things may reach the deepest places of your heart, like caring for someone, watching how everything just goes with the flow, or simply standing with someone who you adore so much. It makes me feel peaceful and calm inside. That's what matters to me. I personally crawled out of a deep bit of depression about half a year ago when I started playing ahead in time. That's why I'm so thankful to everyone who worked on the game and that's the reason why I got this plushie. She's my moral supporter and helps me to get through each day with ease. For the final words I wanna say, please take care of your relatives, your close friends and also your loved ones as they're the most important things that you have in this world. Take care of yourselves too, and see you sometime in the future. I'm out.